So Alex has been uh, experimenting with some uh, serial devices, and I read the first sentence and I have no clue. So I'm going to learn a lot right now. Alex Cremona is on for us. Okay, so I'll begin by, by explaining uh, a little bit what I've been doing. Um, essentially, I, I found that we didn't have enough serial ports on the Amiga because I like to connect things uh, to the Amiga, various hardware devices. And my original intention was to get voice command working again because uh, I love to use voice command. It's like Star Trek computer, turn the lights on, turn the music on, anything. Um, but the uh, old 68K uh, voice shell program um, doesn't know anything about uh, AHI, so I, I, I don't know assembly, so I couldn't actually update it to use AHI input. So I was looking for an alternative, and, and what I did is I, I found that there was some hardware that could plug into the serial port and do voice um, recognition, um, and basically just spit out whatever word was said. Um, but, uh, but then I already used my serial ports for my extent system and for debugging, and only have two on the Amiga uh, XC and the X1000. So I, I basically first decided I need more serial ports. What happens if I plug a serial, um, a PCI serial card, but then nothing happened because the OS didn't know anything about it. So I ended up basically adding support for uh, more serial ports. Um, by making the serial device automatically recognize any PCI or PCI Express um, serial card. And some have two ports, some have four ports, eight ports, even 16 ports. Um, and the driver hopefully just automatically recognizes all of them and, and just adds more serial units. So now we can have serial unit two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, and it's completely transparent, you just access it normally. Um, so that's what I did first, is basically have support for more serial ports. And um, then the, the one thing I found is all these little devices are, are usually used on Arduino. So an Arduino is basically, it's like a little microcontroller. Um, I should probably remove the sensor shield. So they're, they're little microcontrollers that are extremely cheap, like the clones are about $10, the original ones are maybe $20. Um, they're, they're kind of like a really old 8-bit computer, but, uh, but they're new and, um, and they have lots of pins so you can plug things into them and either control the pins or read from the pins so you can connect sensors. Um, and, and I found that for a lot of these little devices, you can't just plug them into the serial port. You need to process the, um, the information that comes from them, or they use different protocols. So, so then I started playing with these things and figuring out how I can connect it to my serial port. Um, and, and I found that on the Arduino, there's an IDE, but it, it doesn't, uh, you can't compile our Arduino code on the Amiga. So, and I wanted everything to work on the Amiga without needing a PC or a Mac. And, uh, so what I, I found, there was a scripting uh, program that you can upload on the Arduino that now gives you access to all, all the pins. Um, and, um, and you can create little quick scripts and use variables. It's called a, a bit slash show you. Um, Okay, so I have the um, uh, I have one Arduino connected into the serial port, and um, and basically I, I use Termi as a terminal right now. But um, Bitlash provides like a, a regular serial interface. Um, in this case, at 115,000 uh, baud, and and so you can just type commands, and that, that lets you basically read or write um, to any of the pins on the Arduino. Uh, here I have a very simple example that's ready. Um, for example, I have a, a red LED that's hooked up to uh, this little Arduino here. And all I have to do is type um, D3, D3 equals 1, and it will turn it on. So 
the, the same principle applies to any um, any device that takes a digital I.O. which is on or off, basically. And then, likewise, for sensors, like here I have a little button, and, and if I if I hold the button down, it's reversed. So when the button is on, a press down, it's zero. When it's let off, it's one. But So right now, if I print um, D2, it should say zero. Uh, no, one because it's off. And if I hold the button down, it will say zero. So that, that just simply illustrates that you can read um, and write um, values to those pins. And, and some of the, um, the Arduinos are a bit more powerful than the original one. Like this one is the Arduino Mega. And it has um, roughly um, like 50, 52 digital um, input outputs that can be used and 16 uh, analog ones that can be used to read analog sensors like a light sensor or temperature sensor. And so um, basically all, all these sensors could be connected to this one and, and processed through a single serial port. So you, you could potentially like, put a dozen of these on the MIGA and have uh, thousands of sensors. Um, so I don't have that many sensors to try, but I will try to max it out at some point to see how far I can push it. Um, but so, yeah, basically that's the um, um, how I interface the Arduino with the Amiga and still keep it fairly simple where you can just interact. So my next step, which isn't ready yet, is um, I'm going to write a serial or finish writing a, a, a serial interface which makes it a lot easier to interact with the Arduino by allowing you to listen to incoming uh, values and um, basically launch a program if a specific sensor is reported as being activated um, and the other way around allowing the maybe through ARX um, to trigger any of the, um, the pins so that other programs can also um, control the, the pins on the Arduino. Um, but some of the, uh, for me, the, the main focus still is to uh, get the voice command working. So um, my goal too is to make a program that is uh, dedicated to voice commands and uh, it just goes directly into the serial port. So the one thing that is a bit different between the Arduino stuff and uh, the typical serial port stuff is all the Arduino components either work on 3.3 uh, volts or 5 volts. Most of the little sensors, um, they work on 5 volts. But, um, but the Amiga on the serial port outputs somewhere between 12 and 18 volts because that's kind of a standard for RS-232. So you need a little converter. It's called an RS-232 to TTL uh, converter. And what this does is it basically copies all the uh, ones and zeros, but uh, drops the voltage down to uh, five volts. So, so you basically have to put that between the, the Arduino or any device you would plug in directly um, to, to take the voltage down. Um, but these are fairly cheap. I, I got a bunch of them. Um, they're, they're like three dollars a piece if you assemble them yourself. And, um, there's some even smaller versions, but, but this is really handy to have. Some have a built-in power um, input, so you can either power it through USB or through an adapter. And there's another option, is to actually pull the power from the PCI serial cord um, and basically um, wire the ring pin into the uh, power input of the little thing. And then this thing can also power the Arduino, so you don't really need a second power source for the Arduino. It will pull its power out of uh, the power pin here. Um, so that, that, that's pretty much the gist of it. And, um, the possibilities are really incredible because for the Arduino, they make countless sensors. Um, they're mostly really cheap, like a dollar, two dollars each. Um, and then you can control displays like uh, well, this one, I, I'm going to try to build it into the case, but um, it, it basically just displays, I, can, I guess I can plug it in. Um, oh. Let's see if that works. Or, uh, no. <laughs> and it's, oh yeah, the power. 
Okay, so this one is just a matrix, a LED matrix display. And I put a program into that Arduino which um, basically drives the matrix. Um, this is a bit too complicated to drive from Bitlash because you can just set pins on and off. It uses a serial uh, SPI, I think, communication protocol. Um, so it takes a bit more work to both have Bitlash and still drive this using the library that came with that little thing. But um, then you should be able to basically um, send any text. Sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> Usually when you try to show it. Yep. Um, but um, let's see. Yeah, for some reason it's not working now, but uh, it, it would normally display um, anything that you send to it. So it could be used as a clock, or it could monitor the CPU temperature or whatever. So that's one thing. And then you can use all these little um, LCD panels, two lines, four lines, some are backlit, so you can control the light color. Um, here there's an example of like a box with like, I don't know, 37 sensors. And the, the whole thing was about $20, so it, it's less than a dollar per sensor. Some are just relays, controllers, but basically it opens a whole world of um, like maker electronic um, to the Amiga because it, it makes it so simple to interface everything. And there's absolutely no risk of frying the, um, the Amiga side of things because of the way the, um, the serial and everything is isolated from the actual motherboard of the Amiga. So it's a little bit safer than playing with uh, the, um, the internal port or, or the... Um, on, on some of the NG machines, they actually have uh, I2C uh, pins on the motherboard, but it's a bit risky to mess with that directly, so it, it's a bit safer to just go through uh, like some, some other device. Um, but that's basically it. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? Yeah, so uh, have you looked at trying to support USB serial devices like the PL2303 or whatever No, because that don't require writing a USB uh, driver and I don't know how to do that. I guess not yet. Can you repeat the question? Uh, so the question was um, uh, if I'm able to support a USB to serial adapter. Like this is an example of a USB to serial adapter to basically provide serial ports through the uh, USB. Um, but I, I just don't know how to code USB, um, like anything that uses USB. So I'm, I'm not really able to, uh, to do that. At least not yet. I, I might still learn it one day and, and do it. But, um, yeah, that's an alternative way of getting more ports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially on machines like the uh, A1222, where there's only one slot, which you kind of need if you want a video card. Yeah. So, yeah, there it might be useful, but um, Rene is far more um, able at USB than I am. Um, but yeah, so basically, for now, at least we have PCI, so you can pull lots of serial ports through PCI. Um, any other question? All right, well, thank you. Demo. Uh, there was Sully. Hi guys. Um, today we're going to be talking about um, Alice, um, what it is, what it isn't, uh, how it actually works, what it looks like. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Alex Perez. Um, I've been uh, selling, manufacturing and selling uh, SCSI SD adapters for the last few years now. Um, so you might have bought one from me at some point in the past, um, and uh, I've got, we've had a few other projects going uh, on in the background. Of course, this is one of them. Uh, it's been an entire year since uh, our last uh, uh, AMI West where this was discussed, and um, we're happy to announce that uh, we think we have really uh, polished product now. Um, one of the base, some, one of the things that happened in the last year is we've changed the baseline hardware um, specifications. Um, to the 7th uh, uh, generation um, Intel Core processors. We have one at the entry level, an i3. We have an i5 that's a nice compact machine with a 12-inch screen. 
uh, and we're working on identifying an I-7. Uh, we also have an I-5-based desktop that's a little fits in the palm of your hand job um, that is quite lovely. Um, so, um, uh, in addition to the seventh generation hardware, uh, the big change is uh, uh, 1080p is now the standard resolution. We will not sell any laptop, any Alice laptop that is not uh, full HD. Um, so uh, Ken's in the driver's seat, and he's done all of the heavy lifting today. So shout out to him. Um, uh, right now we're booted into the classic environment, and uh, uh, Ken's going to just poke around a bit for you, for us to see what we've got. Um, this is actually running uh, Win UAE on top of Linux, so and despite that, it's quite speedy. Um, uh, what we've got here is Rabbit Hole. We've got Firefox open, and we're running. Uh, Firefox on top of uh, the classic environment here in the background, um, and uh, the Wi-Fi here in the uh, <laughs> in the off in the conference room is a little dodgy right now. Um, I think everyone's come home for the day and is uh, watching uh, YouTube, uh, but it worked great earlier. Um, and uh, uh, so we've got um, uh, Ken's background artwork, obviously. Um, we've got the uh, OS4. Uh, uh, similar looking theming and as you can see here is LibreOffice. Um, all of this all of this comes standard install um, and uh, by default unless you request otherwise your Alice laptop will come in a tri-boot configuration with uh, with uh, a classic environment on top of Linux an OS4 environment on top of Linux and Windows and uh, based on polling data that we took in a survey back in uh, late February, we know that roughly a third of our potential customer base ha has no interest in Windows. Um, uh, a third doesn't seem to really care either way, and a third absolutely must have Windows, so we which creates some logistical issues for us, but it's nothing that can't be worked through. Um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we're doing uh, for the initial release of this, uh, obviously the very first machines that have been sold have been sold here this weekend. Um, I've got another batch of them on my way, on the way to to, to my place, uh, and those are going to go out and be prepped later this week. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, what I would encourage everyone to do who's interested in buying is follow us on Facebook. Um, and uh, if you just search uh, Amiga Alice on Facebook, you'll find us. Um, all of our uh, updates will be delivered there, and we may be making uh, forum posts as well in, re in response to uh, questions about the platform. Um, from a technical perspective, at the beginning, at the end of the day, uh, this is a highly customized Ubuntu Mate kernel uh, installation with a slightly newer kernel to accommodate the fact that the Wi-Fi modules that ship with most seventh-generation laptops are slightly newer than what the previous version of Ubuntu, which was 16.04, supports. Um, so, uh, while we're, um, while we're, uh, have you clicked on the uh, start menu yet, the Amikit X menu? Yeah. Um, so you can see what this comes with. It comes with a variety of well-known pieces of software. Everything that you, if you've ever used Amikit before, it's, it's, it's everything you come to expect out of Amikit, pre-bundled, pre-installed. Um, and of course, uh, because it's UAE, um, if you press uh, F12, to the F12, you get your standard Win UAE properties, and you can do things like uh, mount ADS, uh, that kind of stuff. All you, all everything you can normally do within any Win UAE uh, environment, you can do here as well. Um, uh, in addition to uh, the classic environment that we're showing now, uh, we have an OS4 environment. Uh, which comes, just to be clear, let me back up. All AMI kit sales come with the following, in addition to the hardware. They come with uh, OS4, Classic Edition, they, a license for that, a license for Enhanced Air Special Edition, um, a, a license for Amiga Forever, and um, uh, uh, a pre-installed uh, AMI kit X install, uh, which uh, has been worked on hard uh, by Jan over the last several years in conjunction with um, Ken. So, um, uh, all of those things, all of that work is rolled up into this package, and um, uh, in addition to the base hardware configuration, um, every AmiKit laptop that we 
that we touch and create has a, at least a 256 gig SSD out of the box. So we replace the factory default slow rotational hard drives that come with these machines. Uh, it creates a far better experience, it creates far better boot times, uh, and it really does go a long way to making feel, things feel snappy. Um, uh, the cost of, of 256 gig SSDs is such now that uh, they're really not, uh, they're basically the smallest SSD you can buy in volume, um, and uh, they're not terribly expensive anymore. So um, the, uh, the other thing that comes with every Amikit uh, install is a recovery uh, uh, USB fob, and that fob allows you to uh, completely re-image the machine if something catastrophic happens to it. So um, with the with the inserting the USB key, pressing F12 when you power the machine on, you can boot into an environment that has a pre-configured Plumzilla restored system that rewrites to the destination uh, SSD, uh, which makes uh, anything you might possibly do as you're learning Linux or uh, fiddling with Windows or whether Windows itself chooses to nuke your machine, um, uh, assuming you have it installed, um, you have an easy way to get back to, to square one. Um, so uh, we're rebooting into OS4 right now, and unfortunately, the output from the bootloader doesn't show on the screen. We'll show you that later directly on camera. Um, uh, so the Linux kernel just loaded there, and now uh, uh, WinUAE is firing up, and the uh, emulated PowerPC uh, subsystem is getting uh, going here. Um, this, de this particular demo is happening on uh, an Acer Aspire E5575, which is an, uh, has uh, an i3-7200 uh, move. It's on the label. 7100. 7100 view. And uh, 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 it, it has, as configured from the factory, it has four gigs of RAM. Anyone who wants more RAM than the standard amount can just simply request it and it will be accommodated. Uh, we can we can accommodate up to uh, 16 gigs of RAM with uh, very little effort, and if you want 32, it's possible to do. Although on an i3 machine, I probably would never consider it personally. Um, so here we have OS4. Uh, anyone who's uh, who has used OS4 before is familiar with a lot of the programs that come along with it. Um, uh, Ken's going to fire up and take us to Amiga World, and depending on how the Wi-Fi is feeling at the moment, we may or may not actually see it. Um, but there we go. Uh, so, yeah, um, what we've, uh, what we've, uh, this is also, uh, again, running under WinUAE, um, so the same two hotkeys that you have in both of the Linux-based Alice environments apply. You have uh, F12 just brings up the WinUAE settings, and F11 brings up the uh, Linux uh, Ubuntu main menu, and, uh, and you can either iterate through with your, with your cursor or simply type ahead for the application you're looking for, um, much as you would on any standard Ubuntu made installation. So um, uh, again, we have Firefox running on top. Um, uh, this is, this is uh, a looking glass, if you will. And um, uh, hey, look, it's MUS 2017 live stream subject. Um, uh, so in the next couple of months, we're planning on uh, uh, ramping up sales outside of North America. Um, from a logistical perspective, as we get our feet wet, um, uh, you know, I, I live two, two hours from, Santa, from, from Sacramento here in San Jose, and it makes sense to, um, uh, uh, for us to have a, 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 an intimate relationship with the first few sales, which we now have, uh, and, uh, and, and we ex I expect to have several more this week, um, probably more than I can accommodate easily, in fact. Um, uh, and uh, so every uh, every environment that's prepared, uh, you know, we, we is hand uh, touched. Uh, Bill, can you throw the um, uh, the, the camera on uh, the um, red laptop at some point in the next few minutes, just so that so, so the i3 laptop has an optional red clamshell, um, which uh, Trevor is a big fan of, needless to say. And um, we are uh, uh, not making you buy that because it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, but uh, uh, for the situ for those who, uh, who who like the protection that it comes with, uh, it's it, it comes standard. If you don't want it, uh, it saves you twenty bucks ish. And um, 
it's it's a nice a nice addition and uh, you know a, 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 a nice addition to the kind of theming of Alice. Um, uh, the laptop itself, the i3 laptop, the entry level machine, uh, we've been selling today uh, here at the show for six hundred dollars. Uh, I anticipate continuing that for the time being, um, and and uh, prices may vary because frankly. We buy in small batches of machines, and as market prices fluctuate slightly, we will adjust our sale price to reflect the same profit margin, um, which is quite thin, as Ken alluded to in the previous talk. Um, we're not doing this to get rich, um, and Ken has, uh, I think, to date, not made a nickel off of any of this effort, so um, uh, certainly not in it for the big bucks. Um, what else do we want to talk about in OS4? Anything, anything anyone wants to see? <coughs> Can you cut and paste from looking glass to the... That's a fantastic question, and I do not know the answer. <laughs> right. I, I think that you can, because I, I'm, I, at least I have a pretty strong Linux background. Um, uh, you know, copy-paste is a pretty fundamental thing that, that uh, I know has worked with Wine for years, so I wouldn't see any reason why, um, assuming the copy-paste you do in Wine uh, works, if we if we try it and it doesn't work, then we know our answer. But um, uh, regardless, uh, there is a mechanism. Uh, as you see, the extra drives there. WinVHC uh, is the C drive, which is actually uh, your Linux drive, and and that's the the portal through which you can transfer uh, large files that you may have downloaded on the Linux side, or um, uh, or or files, frankly, that you want to get out of your classic your virtualized classic environment. Um, so, uh, fingers crossed, uh, nope, doesn't work. Okay, so, um, uh, that's possibly something we can think about adding in the future. I, I think it actually works on the classic side. Okay, side. Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't no surprise one. Got it. So, um, we can try that and report back uh, on our, on our uh, website and Facebook uh, page, but um, uh, uh, it's certainly something. A lot of li those little types of features uh, can be uh, uh, improved upon. Um, uh, can you fire up um, the uh, the updater? We've got IMI PDF here opening up on the documentation. Which? That's just the Amigo S4 uh, release notes. Um, uh, the uh, enhancer updater. Oh, the enhancer updater. We're not logged in with enhancer right now, so we won't. Uh, well, Trevor might have actually logged himself in. This is his demo machine, uh, which was sold earlier uh, during the show. Um, so yeah, so Amisphere comes... What's your account information? <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Um, I'm sure he's bought everything on there. Um, uh, so, so yeah, any update can sit here uh, once you're logged in and, and snark down all the update information, which just allows you to purchase uh, 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 the, the um, items that are in the Ami store, as well as uh, use the, the free items that are there. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty good basic operate, a basic overview. Um, does anyone have any questions about the OS4 specific environment while we're in it? It's not any different than you might be uh, used to seeing OS4 running under when you are. Yes. Now what is there any known limitations to the OS4 side at this point? There certainly are. Um, big improvements have been made on the OS4 side since last year that have nothing to do with us. It's just WinUAE improvements that, frankly, uh, we benefit from and are thankful for. Um, uh, the big one is uh, uh, a native graphics driver, um, which frees us from some of the resolution limitations associated with uh, Picasso 96. Um, it's, it's also hugely more performant, frankly, uh, and, uh, and that's always nice. Um, one of the other things that um, has been improved upon uh, is um, the. Uh, uh, you were you were talking about these earlier. We got we've got um, on the on the WinUAE side in the last year we've got the um, memory limitation. Uh, so in conjunction with some work done by Hyperion, we've got uh, a far greater usable amount of RAM. I believe it's 768 megs. Is, is that uh, within the OS4 environment? What's that? 894. 894. Fantastic. Um, that, that really makes things, uh, gives it quite a lot more breathing room. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, Tony just continues to add ridiculous features to a new AE. Um, and he does it because he loves to. So um, we thank him for the work, and, and frankly, we wouldn't have been able to make Alice uh, as performant 
uh, without him. Because while we were previously using FSU AE on the Linux side, uh, we decided that uh, WinU AE has really come to maturity and is, uh, is, 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 is a comparable or better choice, even on top of Linux, um, which is uh, bizarre when you initially uh, realize what's happening, but um, uh, quite, quite nice. So um, that's all we what really wanted to touch upon. I think we want to show you also the, um, the boot menu, so you see it from start to finish, and, and have an idea of the, of the boot time for both OS4 and Classic. Uh, yes, one more question. Yes? Is there a size, size limitation on the RAM disk? That's a good question. Do you know? Size limitation on the RAM disk within, within OS4 or Classic? I'd imagine there are different limitations depending on the environment. Well, well basically, yeah, what we're seeing now, I guess, is what I'm yeah, yeah, OS4 basically. Right. It's whatever, whatever the whatever the version of uh, WinUAE we're using, which can we probably know off the top of his head. Uh, it's, the, it's the current uh, release. It's the current release. Uh, 3 5, 2017, 6 15. Yeah, there's some betas released. Yeah, whatever this supports is what the max is. Is that? I know that's a, a weaselly answer. No, 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 but, no, no, no. Uh, that, that, that's fine. I, I wasn't expecting an exact answer. Yeah, I just sure. figured that you'd have some idea that, yeah, you could make a pretty good sized RAM disk. I'd imagine you could make a very good sized RAM disk. Okay, great. Several hundred megabytes at least. <laughs> Although, frankly, you don't necessarily need to do that because the disk underneath is an SSD. It doesn't buy you the same increase in performance as it would have in a traditional well, environment. Yeah, performance is what I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, Putting stuff in RAM just makes a lot of things easier. Got it. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know the the, uh, the the base SSD size is 256. I should have gone into this earlier, as I mentioned. Uh, but we're happy to accommodate uh, uh, people who would like a larger SSD. Um, the i5 uh, hardware configuration we're using today uh, comes with a uh, 500 plus gig SSD, some of them are, uh, some, there's kind of some variance in exactly how much you get in SSD land with a 500, but they're all at least 512 gigs. Um, and uh, uh, the, this particular i3 machine has um, a USB-C port, which is kind of neat. Um, it's got a couple of USB-3 ports and uh, a full-size SD card slot in terms of uh, hardware bells and whistles. Um, Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna take it to the grub menu, interrupt it so that we can see it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ken. I, I, this weekend has been totally insane, and Ken has done an amazing job uh, with the heavy lifting. And I don't honestly think I could have done it without him. Um, uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully he's always there for. <laughs> but uh, but I will be processing all orders and, and fulfilling them. Uh, uh, under the name of uh, uh, Universal Computing for the time being. Um, and uh, as we branch out uh, to uh, Europe and other continents, we may uh, utilize partners to distribute uh, and drop ship products for us that are warehoused by them. Uh, and we're working on establishing exactly how that's going to work, which is part of why we're focused on North America right now, because we can distribute uh, easily within NAFTA countries for uh, the foreseeable future. All right, so we're at the. This is the um, the the, the uh, uh, refined menu, the EFI uh, bootloader menu, and, uh, and you've got your default of Windows. The defaults to the last. One. Sorry, the defaults to the last one, which is OS4. You've got the AMI kit, and you've got Windows. And there's a little label below here that you can barely see uh, when, uh, right now that, that shows you that. So we're gonna we're gonna pick AMI kit, and we're gonna pick it off, and uh, uh, of course. Um, once we're in Linux, which happens within, I don't know, five, six, ten <coughs> seconds, something like that, uh, boom, now it's on the projector, uh, and, and we see the same thing both places. Um, so the full end-to-end -end boot is uh, pretty quick. It's happening right now. There, there's the environment. Um, and, uh, and we'll go ahead and, uh, and start uh, and show uh, the, the same deal with OS4, so you get an idea of the <coughs> As we, um, as we continue to talk about uh, 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 models, um, I want to give a little bit of a, a shout out to the desktop variant, which I personally really like. Um, it's, a, it's a gigabyte of bricks, it's an iFi based system. 
Um, and uh, it's got uh, onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It can drive dual monitors. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's, a really, it's a really nice machine, and uh, uh, it comes with uh, a, a, a 512 gig SSD standard. Um, uh, the beautiful thing about it is, it, uh, you know, if you travel and you don't want to, you already carry a laptop, but you want to take your environment with you, it's, uh, it's, it's super tiny, it fits in the palm of your hand, and you can hook it up to a TV if it does 1080p. Uh, you know, you can really, uh, you can pair it with any Bluetooth device within Linux, and then those devices will be usable uh, within your classic environments. Um, so, we've got OS4 booted, there's the background, and uh, uh, there's uh, Firefox, Fire Firefox up. Alright, so, um, as you can see, it's pretty quick, and um, if you're considering buying one, uh, uh, we encourage you to follow us on Facebook, which would probably be the primary way. Uh, if, for those of you who don't use Facebook, um, uh, uh, if you did, if you have not already filled out uh, our survey, which we uh, which we circulated back at the end of February earlier this year, um, uh, if you go to our Facebook page, you don't need to be on Facebook to fill the survey out. There's a link to it. Um, uh, we do ask some questions about about some of your preferences. Um, and, uh, and as we go on uh, fulfilling the first few orders, we may make some adjustments to uh, uh, the hardware, uh, depending on exactly what people continue to indicate that they want. Um, effectively, what we're doing is a just-in-time based order delivery system. Um, we'll ha always have a handful, single digit, of machines on hand, um, and, uh, uh, and they'll be prepped and shipped uh, within a week, generally speaking. So. Um, the, the system will evolve over time, as I indicated earlier, but I think that um, it's a good one for now, and uh, you know, if we uh, have significant demand, we may need to reevaluate re the way we're, we're going about preparing the machines, um, but for the time being, uh, what we have works. So, uh, if you're considered buying one, um, you, can, uh, you can email me directly. Um, at uh, aperez, A-P-E-R-E-Z, at inertial, I-N-E-R-T-I-A-L, dot biz. Um, you can ask questions to me directly there. Um, but if you do use Facebook, we encourage you to do it there, uh, simply because uh, it allows other people to see uh, and, and, and uh, see the questions, ask other questions, etc. cetera. Um, anything you want to add? You did a great job. Great. OK, well, I guess we're done. Yes, question. What is your Facebook page? Uh, that is an excellent question. Uh, uh, I believe it is Alice, Facebook.com slash Alice Laptop, but don't quote me on it. We'll test it. Um, it's been uh, it's been around for uh, really since the last uh, uh, the, the, uh, several weeks after the last Amy West, um, as we were uh, developing uh, uh, our uh, presence. And if you just go to Facebook and search Alice Laptop, you'll you'll find it. Also, facebook.com slash right there. Yeah, so it's just Alice Laptop. Facebook.com slash Alice Laptop. The AmiKit page may link to us, but that is a separate project, and they do sell their their uh, environment directly to end users. So um, I would encourage people, uh, if you're interested in just AmiKit, Jan's work is great. Um, if you're interested in an integrated environment like what we've created, um, you can just go to facebook.com slash Alice Laptop um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and click through to shop and, uh, and, and ask us questions. All right, is that it? We're good? All right. Thank you. Lots of last presentation for uh, MUS 2017. We still have activity out there on the floor and uh, we would like to uh, solicit everyone's help uh, about 5 o'clock to start loading everything out the door. Uh, we have people with vehicles that are going to be lined up at that point so that we can get the uh, equipment basically along the outside wall and uh, uh, down here about two tables into tables, uh, I should say into tables, into vehicles uh, and out to the uh, SAC uh, storage area out in Roseville. And then after that, uh, the task is complete, and all we have left in here are tables and chairs. Uh, then uh, we can go to dinner like we usually do. 
Uh, and at this point, I think we're probably going to, unless there's you know, complete anarchy or uh, some sort of mutiny going on, uh, probably go to Brookfield like we usually do. And just because it's close and convenient and it's a good jumping off of space to people who reside in San Francisco. So um, we're going to do what we are doing out in the show floor right now, and uh, somewhere around 5 o'clock, we're going to start packing up. Thank you very much for uh, participating online, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we've enjoyed doing it. And uh, watch um, the. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, watch SAC.org for uh, dates for next year. Uh, it will be sometime after October 2nd next year, but we will announce dates uh, specifically as soon as we check with the hotel and see what we can get this time frame for next year. So uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we hope to see you next year instead of watching online.